Adams, Director of Instruction at the Academy of Golf at PGA National. Today I'm going to talk to you about the laws of golf. The laws of golf is a revolutionary new way to learn the optimal golf swing for you. It is a personal swing system that will help you customize your golf swing and your technique to fit your body. This overview video will help you understand how easy the laws model will work for you. In it, you will learn the characteristics and the differences of the three models in the system. And myself, TJ Tomasi, and Dr. Jim Suddy will show you how to test yourself to determine which model best fits you. We will also highlight the key fundamentals and teaching points which are available to you in the follow-up comprehensive instructional video. The Laws of Golf is revolutionary and exciting. Just listen to what the experts say. John Andrasani of Golf Magazine says, The Laws of Golf instructional model is one of the most practical and innovative teaching systems I've seen in 25 years in the business. I thought I'd seen it all until Mike Adams developed this amazingly simple model. Senior PGA Tour sensation Jim Albus told us, The simplicity and logic of the Laws teaching system has allowed me to match my swing fundamentals to my unique body and to maximize my game on the golf course. And from the LPGA's Michelle McGann, the Laws of Golf teaching system has improved my game and helped me to move up to the next level. The architects of this revolutionary new learning system are Mike Adams and his colleagues, TJ Tomasi and Jim Suddy. Mike Adams is one of America's most sought after golf instructors and one of Golf Magazine's 100 best teachers. Mike teaches over 40 PGA, LPGA, and senior tour players, as well as numerous amateur champions. He's the director of golf instruction at the Academy of Golf at PGA National in Palm Beach Gardens, Florida, and oversees other schools in the U.S. and abroad. T.J. Tomasi is a noted golf instructor and writer. He is director of instruction at the Five Star Academy of Golf at the Broadmoor Golf Club in Colorado Springs, Colorado. He's regarded as one of the foremost authorities on the golf swing. TJ has a PhD in education with an emphasis on learning theory. Jim Suddy was also named one of America's 100 best teachers by Golf Magazine. His clientele include numerous PGA, LPGA, and senior tour professionals. Jim is a pioneer in biomechanics in golf and is the director of instruction at Pine Meadow in Mundelein, Illinois. And now here's your host, Mike Adams. I'd like to introduce to you the laws of golf. Laws is an acronym for leverage, arc, and width swings. We found that two out of every three golfers mismatch the way they swing the golf club with their build. That is, they try to make their body do something that it's not capable of doing. That's a big reason why you always hear that golf is such a hard or difficult game. That is also why the average handicap hasn't changed much in the last 60 years. We know that you can't play your best golf unless your technique matches your physique. Now, after years of research, both in the laboratory and on the tee, we've developed the Laws of Golf Personal Swing System, the most effective way to match your body type with your swing type. We've tested the Laws of Golf model in our golf schools, our private lessons, with skill levels of players from tour player to beginner. We've studied thousands of hours of tape, the swings of the greatest players of all time, the masters of the game. All together, TJ Tomasi, Jim Suddy, and myself have given over 100,000 golf lessons with a total of over 70 years experience in golf instruction. The Laws of Golf video is a culmination of this experience and our way to make our findings known to you, the golfers of the world. In this overview video, we're going to introduce you to our three swing models and show you how to test yourself to determine which model fits you. We're going to highlight some key instruction from the following comprehensive instructional video. In the leverage, arc, and with swing segments, we're going to help you find your dominant power source so that you will hit the ball farther and with improved accuracy. We're going to plug you into your dominant dimension that will give you the most direct route to the golf ball. We're going to help you find your ideal backswing position and swing plane so you'll hit the ball with greater accuracy, greater distance, and greater consistency. In the comprehensive video, we will give you detailed instruction on the fundamental swing mechanics of each model. We'll give you drills to make you better. You can learn all three techniques on one complete video.
If you haven't already done so, you can order your comprehensive video now by contacting your local golf supplier or by calling 1-800-GOLF-TYPE. I guarantee that if you view these videos and use them as a blueprint and refer to them often, you will hit the ball farther and with greater accuracy. Why is it important for you to match your golf swing to your body type? Good question. See, what we have found is there are good news and bad news about golf instruction. The good news is everything that is taught is correct. The bad news is not everything that is taught applies to you. Envision this. I'm a shoe salesman. What I have found through my experience is that the number one best-selling shoe is a black and white saddle. The average shoe size in America is size 9.5C. So I've come to the conclusion that we will manufacture only one shoe, a size 9.5C black and white saddle. The American public won't stand for this because the shoe doesn't fit. Just as ludicrous as that scenario is the scenario of us trying to teach everybody to swing the same way. Take a look at these three individuals. As you can see, they're each built differently. He is shorter and stockier. He is taller and thinner with long arms, and he's more moderately built. These builds will affect how they swing the golf club and how they do things. I want to show you something about each one of them. Okay? First of all, I'm going to have each turn to the side. First, I'm going to have him elevate his right arm. What you notice when he does that, his, his hand finishes four fingers below his shoulders. When he elevates his right arm, you'll notice it, fin it finishes between four and five fingers above his shoulder. And when he elevates his right arm, you'll notice it comes right up to the shoulder. His plane is going to be flatter, his is going to be more upright, and his is going to be more moderate. Now let's check arm swing. With his arm straight out in front of him, if I swing the left arm across his chest, when his left arm runs into his chest will determine how much arm swing he has. Well, his left arm runs into his chest at the same time his left hand runs into his right. He's got 45 degrees of arm swing. When his left arm runs across into his chest, it's swung well past his right hand. He's got more than 45 degrees of arm swing because of his long arms and thin chest. When he swings his left arm across his chest, his left arm runs into his chest well before his left hand runs into his right. So he's got very little arm swing, so his right hand is going to have to come across to get that on the club. So we see an individual with very little arm swing because he's got a thicker chest and shorter arms, an individual with excessive arm swing because he's got a thinner chest and longer arms, and an individual with moderate arm swing. Now let's check shoulder rotation. Okay, now go ahead and rotate your right arm back. As you can see, he has difficulty doing that. His right arm wants to work this way, and that's why he fights over the top in his golf swing. Go ahead and rotate your right arm back. And what you see, he has no problem with his right arm laying back. He will fight the club getting too far behind him in his golf swing. And when he rotates his right arm back, you'll see it stays straight up and down, so his arms will drop very readily. Now, what I'd like each of you to do is take your right arm to the top of your backswing and hold that position. Now, staying in that position, I'd like you to bring your left arm up to meet it, but keep the left arm extended. Now what we see is a gap between where the right arm goes and where the left arm goes. What I want to see now is bring the right arm to the left. Now we see the dominant dimension for each player. His arms automatically went naturally to the width dimension. His arms automatically went to the height dimension. And his arms automatically went to the depth dimension. These are three of the four dimensions that the golf club is swung in. Depth, height, and width, the fourth dimension being time. Now, what we're going to see is when I put you in, these do in your natural dominant dimension, you will have the most direct route to the golf ball. Example, swing the club. Our depth player is what we call our leverage player. When he gets in the depth dimension, watch the left arm fall. It falls directly to the golf ball. That is going to give him the most direct route to the golf ball. But if I were to try to swing him into the height dimension, what you'll see is the left arm will fall from outside the inside or over the top. If I move him into the width dimension, you'll see that same out to end motion. So depth is the best for the leverage player. 
Our arc player, when I swing him to the height dimension, wants the left arm fall. He has a very direct route to the golf ball. But when I try to swing him to the depth dimension, the arms get too far behind him, and he has an abrupt in to out swing. The same will happen if I try to swing him to the width dimension, very much in to out. So he's going to be more dominant in the height dimension. Now my width player. If I swing him to the width, his weight is on his right side, and when he allows the left arm to drop, it swings directly to the golf ball. But if I were to try to swing him into the depth dimension, you'll notice his spine straightens up, and when he lets the left arm fall, the swing it happens out to the right of target. If I take him to the height dimension, what you'll see is his weight moves to the left side, and when he lets the left arm fall, he swings from out to in. So it's very important for him to swing the club in the width dimension, for him to swing the club in the height dimension, and for him to swing the club in the depth dimension. So our leverage, arc, and width players, they need to plug into their dominant dimension to have the most direct route to the golf ball. Now, later in this comprehensive video, what we're going to do is show you how to find yourself within the model. What this model does is allows you to stay the centerpiece of the instruction instead of trying to force you to try to fit into what we teach. Next, I'd like to introduce my colleague, Dr. T.J. Tomasi. He will highlight some of the key instruction from our comprehensive video. Thanks, Mike. In the golfing equation, good golf equals good distance plus good direction. Distance plays an important role. There are three power sources that we can draw on to solve the distance problem. The first is leverage. Leverage is the arrangement of your muscles and bones that allow you to move your body in an efficient and powerful way. The second is arc the height and distance your club head travels from address to impact. And the third is muscular power, how your physical strength determines the speed of your club head. Now, while you use a mix of all three power sources when you hit a golf ball, every golfer has a dominant power source, and one of these three is always in control. The key concept is this. When you plug into your dominant power source, you get rid of the lunges and lurches that are so characteristic of golfers who have mismatched their technique with their physique. Order your comprehensive swing video, and what we'll do is show you how to correctly match your technique to your physique. You won't have to lunge at the ball, and you'll never get trapped in that fire and fall back position so characteristic of the mismatched golfer. It's also important to note that we play this game in four dimensions, height, width, depth, and of course time, the valuable currency that unites these dimensions together. What I'd like to do now is to take a minute for some definitions so we'll all be on the same page. I've taken this board and put it on my toe line. Anything that moves away from the body on this line we call the width dimension. Anything that moves over the body on this line we call the height dimension. And anything that moves behind this line, such as the club head, we call the depth dimension. Height, width, depth, and time. And how you move your body around in these four dimensions determines how well you'll play. So order our comprehensive video, and we'll show you how to do just that. The route or path your club head takes during your swing is dictated by your body type. And the only way your club head can take the most direct route to the ball, the power route, is by matching your swing type to your body type. Otherwise, you develop power leaks that make it impossible to play your best golf. In our comprehensive instructional video, we teach you the proper fundamentals for each swing model. We show you how to find the most direct route to the ball and how to correct power leaks when they occur. The Laws of Golf Personal Swing System will show you how to successfully link your dominant power source with your dominant dimension. This will also help you to correct power leaks so that you'll strike the ball with greater accuracy and greater consistency. This is the foundation for the Laws model. Now, Mike will show you how to identify your body type and your swing type model. Now that you understand how important it is to match your technique to your physique, what we need to do is help you find out which model best matches you. To help you with that, we've devised five tests and a simple and easy scoring system to help you determine that. The five tests are number one, the body recognition test. Number two, the arm elevation test. Number three, the arm swing test. And number four, the shoulder rotation test. And the final and the heaviest weighted test is what we call the dominant dimension test. 
Now, the way we score this is if you are plus five and above, you will be an arc player. If you are minus five and below, you will be a width player. And you will, if you are between minus four and plus four, you will be a leverage player. Now, it's important for you to understand that plus and minus does not denote positive or negative. It's simply a way for us to determine what category and what body type you fit into. So now, let's go with the test. Let me take you through each test so that you can score yourself and determine what body type you fit into. Our first test is the body recognition test. If you happen to match one of our three models, let's say that you are average build with symmetrical length arms and legs, you're probably going to be a leverage player. Let's say you're tall and thin with thin chest, a lot of flexibility, and long arms. You're probably going to be an arc player. And let's say that you're shorter, stockier, with a large chest and short limbs. You're probably going to fit in the width category. Even though you identify with one of these three models, I'd like you to take the other four, the other four tests to make sure. The next test we're going to use is the arm elevation test. In the arm elevation test, I'd like you to take your shoulders and put your back right up against the wall so both shoulder blades are against it. Then I'd like to take the hand and make a fist with the index finger extending and the thumb up in a pistol position. Taking the right elbow and placing it up against the rib cage, simply fold the arm up and elevate it. Where that thumb elevates to, its relationship to the shoulder determines what you are. If the thumb is above the shoulders, However many inches it is above, score yourself plus that many. If the thumb happens to reach the shoulder dead level, give yourself a zero because you're at ground zero. And if the thumb happens to elevate below the shoulder, however many inches it is below the shoulder, give yourself a negative. Let's see what you score and let's check out how our models did. Our third test is the arm swing test. What this is going to determine is our natural amount of arm swing and how our chest thickness affects that arm swing. To do this test, we're simply going to back up so our shoulder blades are directly against the wall. Then we're going to extend both arms directly out in front of us. Now, if you're left-handed, simply reverse what you're going to do. If you're a woman, simply elevate the left arm slightly so it fits on top of your breast. Now, from this position, what I'd like to have you do is simply swing your left arm across the chest. When the left arm contacts, not compresses, the chest area, that is the stop point. Now, swing the left arm across the chest. If your left arm contacts the chest in this position, measure the distance between the left finger and the right fingers, and that will determine your number. If this position is the, where you are, it is a negative however many inches it is apart. If the left hand continues across and contacts the chest at the same time as the left hand contacts the right hand, score yourself a zero. If when the left arm swings across the chest, the left arm contacts the chest with the hand well past the right hand, measure the distance between the fingers and score yourself plus. Now, score the first two tests together and see how you stand. Now let's check on our models. Now let's go to our fourth test, the arm rotation and flexibility test. What we're going to determine with this test is our ability to drop the club onto the plane and turn through the golf ball. Now let's check the test. Take your back and place it up against the wall or a door jam. Elevate your arm so that the elbow and shoulder are level to each other. The arm will start in a straight up position or as close to a straight up position as you can get. If this is where you start, that's fine. Simply rotate the right arm back. If the right arm moves back to a perpendicular position to the ground or in a vertical position, give yourself a zero. If the right arm happens to be able to rotate farther back, measure the distance from perpendicular and give yourself plus however many inches that is. If the right arm happens to stay in a position that's angled forward, measure the distance from the fingertip to the perpendicular and give yourself negative that many points. Tally the three tests we've done so far together and see how you stand. Now, let's check in our models and see how they're doing. Our fifth 
test is the dominant dimension test. And to help me with that test, I'd like to bring our leverage model on the stage. Now, to do this test, you're simply going to take your left arm and extend it straight out in front of you. Then take the right hand and pass it under the left arm, placing the right palm on the right side of your face. From this position, all you're going to do is turn to the top of your backswing. Now, if your arm extends into the depth dimension, score yourself a zero. If it happens to rise up into the height dimension, give yourself plus five. If it happens to be dominant into the width dimension, give yourself a negative five. From this test, if you still can't tell what you are, we have one final test for you. Simply take your right arm to the top of your backswing. Bring the left arm up to meet it. Now, if there's a difference between the two, simply bring the right arm down to meet the left. What you notice is the left arm and shoulders match and the hands are behind the right shoulder, you are a leveraged player. If the left arm is above the shoulders, you are an arc player. And if the left arm is below the shoulder plane and the arms are out in front of you, you are a width player. Tally up your scores and determine what body type you are. If you are, are a leverage player, go directly to the leverage portion of the comprehensive video. If you're a width player, go directly to the width portion. And if you're an arc player, go directly to the arc portion. If you don't happen to own the comprehensive video, you need to order it right now so you can get on your way to becoming a better golfer and playing the best golf of your life. Now listen to what others have to say. Rosie Jones told us, the laws of golf speaks the language of any golfer, allowing any level of golfer to find their own personal golf swing. Club pro John Scheffler told us, Mike Adams' ideas and philosophy of the golf swing are outstanding. They make any golfer understand much more clearly what a sound golf swing really is. And from avid golfer Bill Yeomans, I discovered in 20 minutes what I had been searching for for 20 years. Within two months, I lowered my handicap by eight strokes. If you haven't already done so, you can order your comprehensive video now by contacting your local golf supplier or by calling 1-800-GOLF-TYPE. The comprehensive video offers detailed instruction for all three swing models. It's been color-coded and time-tagged for easy reference. Call now, 1-800-GOLF-TYPE, and start to lower your handicap today. Welcome to the Laws of Golf. Hi, I'm Mike Adams, Director of Instruction at the Academy of Golf at PGA National in Palm Beach Gardens, Florida. This video is for you. What you're about to see is revolutionary. What you're going to find out is it doesn't matter how you're built or how athletically inclined, this system will work for anybody and everybody. Welcome to the Laws of Golf. A personal swing system that will help you customize your golf swing to fit your body type. The architect of this revolutionary new teaching system is Mike Adams. Mike has dedicated his career to research and development of the golf swing. Working with Mike are T.J. Tomasi, a noted instructor and writer, and Jim Suddy, a respected teacher of numerous PGA professionals. Special thanks to Bolle, makers of Eagle Vision Eyewear, and PGA National in Palm Beach Gardens, Florida. And now here's your host,